Greetings citizens and welcome back. This is the next segment in the dual joystick setup series for Star Citizen. This video does assume that you went through the earlier segments and in particular set up Thrustmaster Target, created a profile and started that profile running so that you are able to go in and set up your controls properly. At the time of this recording there is a bug in the Star Citizen menus to where if you set a dead zone for one stick, it carries over to the other stick. And that is really, really, really bad. You want zero dead zone on the right hand stick and a huge dead zone on the left stick. So please check that other video segment on setting up Thrustmaster Target in order to get that taken care of unless you are sure that this problem has been resolved by the time that you're watching this video. If that is the case, then you can use the in-game settings in order to get your dead zone for that left hand stick. Real quick, we're just going to revisit the uh, axes that we're going to bind to each of the controls. First, we're going to look at our x-axis. x-axis is left and right on your joystick. Uh, so your right-hand stick, you're going to set that x-axis to yaw, most definitely not to roll. So left-hand control, then you're going to be binding strafe left and right to that left-hand axis. Next pair is going to be your y-axis. That is the forward and back axis on your joysticks. Uh, so the right hand one is going to be pitch up and down. Now the standard setup is forward is nose down and back is nose up. And then with your left hand joystick is going to be strafe forward slash back. And the last will be roll on the left hand for your rotational, your twist axis Z. And strafe up and strafe down on the twist axis on your right hand. That is the least used of these controls. Alright, now we're in game. Let's go ahead here and head into the options menu. So first we're going to assign the axes to the different joystick axes. So let's go in here. Uh, once you hit key bindings, you're going to hit this little arrow here to move over to joystick slash HOTAS and hit advanced controls customization in the bottom right corner here. And then you want to expand out the flight movement section. Now I recommend deleting all of the functions that are bound in here. You will see that this one is completely blank and that's the way that I like to start with a blank canvas. That way you don't accidentally wind up with multiple functions bound to the same button without realizing it. So if you want to expand all these out and delete the functions, what we do, if you highlight that function and then right click on it with your mouse, it'll blank it out. So just blank out everything to start and then we'll pick up from there. So moving on, joystick axis assignments, we need to set up our six different axes. First one is going to be pitch. Pitch, uh, go ahead and double click on that, push your right hand stick forward, and you should see it come up as Y. Now if it says Y just plain and simple, then that is joystick number one. Uh, if it says input and a number in parentheses, then that is the joystick ID for that joystick. So for most of you, it'll probably be input 2 for your right hand control. So for most of you, it'll probably say Y input 2 when you do this. Make a note of that. This is very important. You need to know what your joystick IDs are. So right now, whatever it says here, if it's blank after the Y, make a note that your right hand joystick is joystick 1. And if it says input 2 or any other number there, make a note that your right hand joystick is that input number. Move on to the next one. Next one is going to be yaw. Make sure you're using the exact ones I highlight here, guys. Uh, don't go in and uh, use yaw right, yaw left, any of those kind of things. Some of them are pretty self-explanatory like these, and some of them get a little bit more confusing later on. Go ahead and, and hit yaw. Double click on that, and then move your right hand joystick to the side, left or right, and it should come up with X. Next one is roll. Again, double click there, and now twist your left hand joystick left or right, the twist function, Z axis, and it should come up with Z. It'll be rot Z most likely, but uh, it should definitely be Z one way or another. Make a note of that joystick ID there. Blank is number one, so if it's blank, your left hand joystick is joystick number one, most likely scenario. 
have it has an uh, input and a number, make sure you write down that that is what your left hand joystick is. Next, we're going to be moving into our actual movement axes. Throttle. We talked about the fact that we don't use throttle in combat, but you might want it for non-combat situations. You can use it as sort of a cruise control. So go ahead and double click on throttle. Uh, and then what I want you to actually do is move that slider that is behind the stick, that silver slider. I want you to move that forward or back on your left hand stick. And that will be what you use for your throttle. Make sure that you're using throttle plane, not throttle up, throttle down, or throttle up slash down. Just plain throttle and bind it to that slider on the back of the left hand joystick. Next control setup is strafe up slash down. Make sure you're using the one with the, with the slash in it. So to go ahead and double click on that. And what you're going to do is twist your right hand stick and it should give you the rot Z or Z axis on the right hand stick for that axis. Strafe left slash right is next. So double click on that one and you are going to push your left hand joystick to the side. You're going to push it sideways and that should bind it to the left hand X axis. Last, strafe forward slash back. Again, make sure it's the one with the slash. And you're going to double click on that and you're going to push your left hand joystick forward or pull it backward and it should assign it to the Y axis on that joystick. Now you have to go in and do all of these again for decoupled mode. So scroll down until you see where the controls start saying decoupled. As soon as you get here, you're going to repeat all of the same things. So decoupled straight strafe up slash down, double click on that and twist your right stick. Decoupled strafe left slash right, double click on that and push sideways on your left joystick. Decoupled strafe forward slash back, double click on that and push forward or back on your left stick. Decoupled yaw, double click and push your right hand stick sideways. Decoupled pitch, double click on that and push your right hand stick forward or pull it back. And decoupled roll will be the last one. Double click on that and twist your left hand stick. You very likely with this setup may find that you don't feel the need to use decoupled at all. If you do decide to use decoupled for whatever reason, uh, then your controls will be set up and ready to go and work the same way as your standard mode. All right, uh, after that guys, go ahead and click on control options up here next to the key bindings button. So go ahead and click on control options and once again click the little arrow to the side. Now you will note joystick slash HOTAS 1 and if you keep going you get HOTAS 2, HOTAS 3, and HOTAS 4. This is where those joystick IDs that you noted come into play. Uh, so if your joysticks are the standard and expected uh, IDs 1 which would have been blank when you were making your bindings and input 2 which would have said input 2 in parentheses when you were making your bindings then joystick slash HOTAS 1 and 2 are the ones that you need to mess with. Now if you had other joysticks or other controllers of some sort connected to your computer if it was something other than blank and input 2 that they were assigned uh, then you're going to have to adjust this accordingly. So you're going to set these settings exactly the same regardless but you will want to be setting them in the numbers that correspond to your two Thrustmaster T16,000 joysticks. If you want to play it safe, you could always just go through and do this in all four of them, one through four. So if one of your controls you find when you go in and test is working backwards, this is where you would fix it. It doesn't go by joystick axis, it goes by control axis in terms of uh, doing the reversals. So look for the one that is working backwards and just switch it from no to yes or yes to no. Pitch, yaw, roll, strafe up, down, strafe left, right, and strafe forward, backward. The sliders are what we're really here for. Master sensitivity curve and flight movement here, we leave those at one. One is the default. Now what this does, making these changes, is going to make your joystick less sensitive near the center of its travel and more sensitive as you go further toward the outside so that you can have lower sensitivity to do careful aiming, fine aiming near the center of the stick's travel, but still be able to turn as fast as the ship is able to turn if you push the stick all the way. It's an exponential curve type setup. 
the bigger a number we set it to, the less sensitive it'll be at the center and the more sensitive toward the outside. Be wary of going too far because the symptoms of having the curve be too big are very similar to having the curve too small. But these settings are what are going to make using a joystick all of a sudden seem much, much more doable and feel a whole lot better and more effective for you. So once you get here, look for that one that says Master Sensitivity Curve. Down from there, the ones we're going to adjust are Flight Pitch, Flight Yaw, Flight Roll. So we want you to set Flight Pitch and Flight Yaw to 1.6. We want you to set Flight Roll to 1.8. Strafe up and down somewhere between 2.0 and 3.0. You can experiment to see what works for you for doing landings probably is what's going to be most critical for uh, getting the sensitivity to something that works for you. The flight strafe left right and the flight, flight strafe forward backward. You probably would start somewhere around 1.6 and see how that feels. If you feel like you're not able to move slowly enough, then you would go to a larger number and we would slide that slider further over to the right. We also are going to go in here to turret aim and we're going to set your turret aim controls in case you want to use your joystick for turret aiming, matter of personal preference. Make them the same as your ship aim controls, so same as your uh, pitch and yaw. 1.6 is what I recommend there. Uh, dead zones, guys, these don't seem to stick and I don't think they have any effect. But on all three tabs, make sure that your X and Y dead zones, set them to zero. Don't panic if you come back and the next time you launch into the game, they're back to saying 0 .03, I think is what they're likely to say. It seems really, really glitchy. We can't use these at the time of this video recording because they are bugged. Go ahead and repeat exactly what I just told you for each of those settings for POTAS 2 and or any other joystick ID that you found one of your joysticks is assigned to. Again, if you want to play it safe, you can go ahead and go through that exact same procedure through uh, for joystick slash POTAS 1, 2, 3, and 4. It will not do any harm to do it that way. Again, go through each of them and set the dead zones to zero, but don't really expect those to stick. The one thing I want you to do, though, when you are done is launch yourself into a free flight and see if there's any noticeable dead zone. See if as soon as you start moving your right hand stick, your ship starts turning very slowly, um, then that's good. If it doesn't start right away and you have to push it a distance before it starts, then you've got a dead zone happening there. And I don't think that will be the case, but it's a really good idea to check. And if it's a problem, uh, you might want to come looking for uh, for some help on the forums or head on over to my stream, twitch.tv slash tripwaterigos, and see if I can help you out there if I have any updated information on the dead zone bugs with the Star Citizen interface. Next up, we're going to go through and check the different axes that you bound and make sure that they are all working the correct way. Uh, so if you go ahead and go to your options here, if any of these things are working backwards, this is where you're going to make the change. So hit options and then go to control options here. And once again, move over to your joystick HOTAS 1 uh, and HOTAS 2. Or if your joystick IDs were different, as discovered in uh, the segment when you were doing your actual bindings, you may have to go in there and make the same changes in uh, joystick 3 or 4. Um, if you just want to play it totally safe, you could just set all the settings exactly the same in all four tabs. Uh, but what we're looking for here is the inversion settings right at the top. So we're going to be checking the pitch, yaw, roll, strafe up down, strafe left right, strafe forward backward, and flight throttle. Not flight throttle up slash down, flight throttle. Okay. So if any of these are working backward from the way that you want them to work, you just go ahead in here and you would change a no to a yes or a yes to a no, just like that. And that's all it should take to get them reversed. So let's go ahead in game and uh, demonstrate the way that these should work. So you can go through and check and make sure your controls are working the way that I recommend. Alright guys, here we go. We're going to go ahead and do our axis tests. So the first one we are going to test is the pitch axis. So this is going to be on your right hand stick. Push the stick forward. 
and pull it backward. Now this is one that some people might want to invert if they are not used to flying with a joystick. My advice is to do it the way what is considered the standard and adapt to that. So the standard setup here is if you push forward on your right hand stick, your nose should go down just like that. Forward on the right hand stick, nose down. Pull back on the right hand stick and that should be up. If it's working the opposite way, go ahead and set the uh, axis to reverse there. Next test is going to be yaw. For yaw, you should be pushing your right hand stick to the left and to the right. So if you push the right hand stick left, the ship should turn left. And if you push the right hand stick right, the ship should turn right. Next is going to be strafe up and down. If you twist the right hand stick, you can strafe up or down. You can set this to whichever way it makes more sense to your mind, to me. Twist the right stick right or up and twist the right stick left or down. We're going to move on to the left hand stick. So left hand stick, the first test, let's go ahead and turn to where we have a near object to use as a point of reference. So we're going to use the station here. So the left hand stick, push forward to stray forward and pull it back to strafe backward. This is your strafe forward slash back if you need to reverse it. Left hand stick, push it right to strafe right. And left to strafe to the left. This is your strafe left slash right if you need to reverse it. And last is going to be your roll. Take your left hand stick twist it to the right and you should get this result rolling right twist it left and this is what you should see rolling left this is one that some people feel like should be reversed somehow it plays a little bit of a trick on your mind but I will tell you from past experience the people who initially have asked me to reverse it for them because it seemed more natural that way have come back uh, a couple weeks later and said, hey, you were right, I should have done it the other way. So I actually advise you to keep this one this way. So twist the stick to your right, and the ship should roll right. Twist the stick to your left, and it should roll left. And that concludes the segment here on making sure that your joystick bindings, your axis bindings, are working the correct way and going through any reversals that are required. Alright guys, that concludes setting up your joystick axes in-game. The next segment will be setting up your joystick button bindings. So come back and check that out if you like, and we'll talk about all that stuff in much detail in that video. Thanks for coming around, guys, and see you in the next video.